Definitely, and it's one of the areas too that I mentioned previously, which is accessibility. And this really has to do with enforcement of the building codes to make sure that buildings are accessible, and also the um, central and planning housing authority uh, needs to do their part in ensuring that whenever they're approving new plans or renovations to plans um, to build in sorry that the area of accessibility is covered because at the end of the day when we exclude a section of our population from accessing buildings uh, which in turn will affect how they access goods and services then really what we're doing is um, creating a disadvantage in terms of not only allowing people to access these services, but also businesses gaining from accessing these services. Because when you remove that economic gain that you, that you would stand to gain, um, you are really putting yourself at a disadvantage. So it really goes both ways and it really benefits um, both individuals. Well, the view I always take is that we, we need to, to have an inclusive approach. And simply what this means is that creating an is that we create an environment where no individual feels as if their difference is something to be emphasized or something to be made quote unquote special because there's really nothing special about having a difference or something that makes you different. And so, um, of course, uh, in terms of the government side of things, we do have our um, Persons with Disabilities Act 2010. And so what, one of the things that we're advocating for is the full implementation of the contents of that act and also the implementation and creation of policies, inclusive policies, that will govern how not only education, but other services are delivered to persons with disabilities.